Good evening, America. You are listening to me, Sergeant Dave, host of the Remember the Fallen show. After having survived a rollover accident avoiding a landmine in a troop transport vehicle, military acronym LMTV, in the Pawan province in Afghanistan in 2004, I emerged and returned to the United States with an even more compelling tale of perseverance as I navigate the rapids of the troubled waters of the VA system. I gain new perspective with a fever of enthusiasm to all patriots across the windswept fields of America. All right, here we are live at the Remember the Fallen YouTube studio in beautiful Seminole County, USA, on the Winter Springs Oviedo line, where we'll be talking about jarheads, Marines, squids, Navy, Air Force, penguins. Yeah, we call them penguins because 98% of them don't fly jets. And then ground pounders, army like me. And once in a while, an occasional coast guard. Ah, maybe not. You see, one of us can be disregarded. Two of us can be ran off. But a podcast show, we are a movement. Okay, here we are with today's guest. He was a former DJ Woody for the Remember the Fallen show. We have Dennis Woodcomb on the line here. He's going to share a little bit about his advocacy, what he's been doing for veterans for the last, what, ever since he got out of uh, the service. He's done a lot with uh, his social work, with UCF, helping veterans. So once again, Dennis, great to hear from you. Great uh, spending your time to be on the show and explaining what great uh, outcome from the seminal stand down. So Dennis, tell us a little bit about your Vietnam experience, what year you went in, a little bit about your job description, and then we'll go into Seminole County. Here you are, Dennis, live. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Dave. <clears throat> Sergeant Dave. Uh, yeah, I was in Vietnam in 1972, when President Nixon was de-escalating the war. Oh, great. Yeah, you caught the kind of tail end of it, but uh, it's still a, a, quite an experience going over there, boots on the ground, and you got your Vietnam lapel pin, right? Yeah. All right, great. So, Dennis, you've been doing a lot with uh, the veterans outside of the military, uh, obviously uh, getting your degree with UCF, so you are very one of those blessed veterans like myself who graduated from UCF. And you went to the VARC, and you helped out there, and you got your vocation rehab. So lately, you've been doing a lot of work with the Seminole Stand Down, the homeless veterans. Can you tell us uh, how that started, a little bit of history behind it, and some of your experiences? You definitely have given back. I, as one person, you pay it forward, and I do appreciate that. So tell me about Seminole Stand Down for the homeless okay, veterans. So, Seminole Stand Down, this is the 10th year that's had it. And I've been involved in almost all of them. Plus, I've been involved with the ones in Orange County and Brevard County. And, you know, it's one of the, great, it's one of the best things that actually help uh, veterans today. You hear a lot of things about, a lot of thoughts about this or that, but this is actual hands-on help that you see that we're benefit, where veterans actually benefit from uh, the having the stand-downs. Uh, Sean Gibbs, who I originally met uh, 10 years ago, uh, is basically the main coordinator, along with Ed Burford, who's the Seminole 
Monroe County Veteran Service Officer. And uh, the stand downs basically begin with the planning. And every year we have several planning meetings to coordinate uh, local uh, veterans, uh, local VA resources, veterans resources, and community resources uh, to combine to have a successful uh, stand down. One of the things that is probably the, one of the best things was we got links involved in it to where uh, veterans could get uh, bus rides to the actual stand down and then uh, be taken uh, back to their point of origins later and you know, the, that really helps uh, a whole lot of veterans get there and get plugged into the resources that they really need. And it's a, go ahead. Yeah, it's a great experience, Dennis. I was there with you. You know, when I left there, I just felt so good that I really did something great for the homeless veterans in our community. I must, I think everybody who left there from that event just felt so invigorated by helping out with the community. And I heard there was actually... I, a, a decrease of homeless veterans in Seminole County. And they could say that because of this 10th year program that they're seeing results. Don't you agree? Well, you know, and the thing is, and that's true, um, it's amazing what happens when a veteran who doesn't know he has any uh, benefits or connections or resources. And once they get plugged into it and because of their willingness, they just blossom into completely different people. Yeah, like I, um, I, I bet you that guy, he didn't know he had the benefits of getting 13 teeth pulled that day. <laughs> he got 13 teeth pulled. I saw him come out of the dental chair. Oh, my God, I felt so sorry for him. But, hey, we took care of him. 13 teeth. He must have had a real bad problem in there. And we stepped up and we pulled 13 teeth from that veteran. Amazing. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, what are the what are the great stories have you heard from uh, the stand downs that you've had in the past? Uh, you know, one, one of the bit, one of the most enduring stories was there was a veteran that showed up, and later his wife showed up, and we were able to pair them together. And I was uh, a battle buddy then, and I escorted him through all the stations. And when we got to the the shower part, they had a uh, shower set up for women. And uh, his wife went in, she got cleaned up, she got clean uh, uh, undergarments and some clean clothes and all this. And she just hugged me and cried because this was the first time in a month that she actually had a hot shower. The only other time she had a bath before that was in a cold water lake. Oh, my God. And, um, and you know, it's just one of them things to where you can actually experience that these people are actually being helped and you can feel their gratitude. Right, exactly, yeah. So uh, I guess the stand down started originally in San Diego, California, and now it's reached across all every state. So it's, it's great that it started somewhere and it's continued to grow. I, you know, I'm looking forward to the 11th year. I hope Ed and Sean can still stay on. And I hope you're going to, I know you're going to continue uh, to your last breath, pretty much. That's how I feel, helping us, our homeless veterans. Definitely. Yeah, well, you know, my focus, both professionally as a social worker and uh, as a uh, veteran's advocate in my retirement, uh, is to, you know, do what I can because in a lot of ways, like I said, I'm a Vietnam veteran and we weren't always looked on very kindly. And the uh, stand down started, you're exactly right, in San Diego. And it was started by Vietnam veterans to help Vietnam veterans. And so the legacy that, it, that Vietnam veterans carry, even though we were even abused by our own people, we still keep each other's backs, cover each other's backs, and take care of our brother and sister veterans, service members, and first responders. Definitely. Veterans helping veterans. There's the best equation right there. When, you know, like the Veterans Crisis Hotline, 
Um, they're all veterans that work the Veterans Crisis Hotline, and I think that is so important. Once, once again, that Veterans Crisis Line is 800-273-8255 and press 1. Once again, the Veterans Crisis Line, 800-273-8255, press 1. Uh, Dennis, do you have the uh, summary by any chance? I'm trying to pull up the summary of uh, what Ed sent you. Would you happen to have that handy? Okay, I will. Don't sit on my computer. I yeah. just need to do a couple click picking and clickings. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to do that right now. It's not working. So if you can get that real quick and, and read the summary and and just tell about you know how Ed Buford's been so critical uh, and it's Sean, amazing these two guys. And it's all voluntarily. It's just amazing with the time and effort they put into it. Awesome. Yes. I even snuck in there and got a flu shot. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to take advantage. Can I get one of those? I go, I walk in there and I say, how do I get shot around here? You know? <laughs> but yeah, they were able to give me uh, my flu shot. Just had to show my ID. And hey, the big red bus was there this time. The first time the red bus was there. What That was a good turnout to see the red bus in the parking lot. Awesome! I, yeah, I, yeah, that's great. I, was, was extremely successful. Oh, that's great. I can't give I can't give blood because when I went to Afghanistan, I took the six shots of anthrax, and every time I give my ID, a flag goes up. So when I give my social, it is flagged. So they go, oh, sorry, we can't you, we can't accept your blood today, you know. So I don't give blood anymore since that. And so Ed Buford said the same thing. He can't give blood either. So certain uh, veterans. Just can't give blood. We're already tainted. Uh, well, yeah, and, and the same and the same goes with me because of my diabetes and other chronic illnesses I have came from Agent Orange. Right. Uh, I'm 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 not allowed to give blood anymore of myself. Oh yes. So, but, mm-hmm. but it's but it's it's absolutely wonderful that we had a lot of volunteers there. Uh, a lot of them came from UCF from the ROTC and all that, and that's part of what. I do, I go out there and I let them people know, you know, what's going on, and um, as you know, I was Battle Buddy Coordinator, and it's just really great to pair up, you know, uh, a volunteer Battle Buddy 
with you know a veteran and make sure that they they get plugged into the services that are there whether the services are from the VA the county or whether they're from uh, community providers hey thank you so much for what you do Dennis you, your inspiration for every other veteran out there for all you do and uh, just keep up the great work and looking forward to the next stand down and the next event uh, we'll see you at the traveling wall, right? That's coming up. Tell me about the traveling wall. I'm already committed for seven events at the traveling wall. Seven events, you die hard. I'm going to bring some coffee. You, you drink coffee? I'm bringing some coffee for you. You're going to need it. Yeah, make sure, yeah, make sure you have cream with it. Okay, I will. I'll make sure. Hey, Dennis, we'll see you on November uh, 8th, right? I'll see you at the Vietnam yeah. traveling wall. Actually, you're going to be there on the 7th. I'll probably be there in the 8th, coming in and out. I still got to work, but I'm going to try to work around my schedule. Dennis, thank you so much for your time and your effort, what you're doing uh, for our veterans out there. And a big hoorah to you. Okay, hoorah, Sergeant Dave. Take care, Dennis. You have a great day. Signing out. Okay. Pop smoke out. Out. <laughs> All right. Now we got to take care of our sponsors. So... All you fit veterans out there in the audience, get down and give me 22 everyday push-ups for the veterans that, that will die of suicide tomorrow. So hopefully this show, they'll call the Veterans Crisis Line and less people will do that. Please call the Crisis Hotline if you're in any type of situation like that. Once again, the Veterans Crisis Line is 800-273-8255 and press 1.
but high winds could also fan the flames that are expected to pick up. I had a chance to catch up with Nicole Miller. She's a Sonoma County, California resident and ask her what people on the ground there think of pg and I know that Governor Newsom has expressed a lot of um, frustrations with pg and e and I think that pg e itself, I would say the community seems very frustrated as well. About two weeks ago, pg e shut off our power here in Petaluma um, as a precautionary measure and we didn't even have any kind of a wind event and so people were like, what is going on? Then this weekend, they did shut off power to many, um, many people, but they didn't to us residents in Petaluma, and we had this historic wind event where people were woken up in the middle of the night by the wind, and yet our power was still on. So it's very interesting to see when pg e makes these decisions and why they make these decisions. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us here on the ground. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. 30% of Americans who are planning home improvements of $5,000 or more will pay for those renovations with a high-interest credit card. That may not be a great idea. A better idea may be to take cash out of your home with a Quicken Loans 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. The rate today on our 30-year fixed-rate mortgage is 3.99%, APR 4.08%. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rate subject to change. Pay 1.25% fee to receive this discounted rate. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 33. Dude, Carl's Jr. Charbroil Double Deals just popped up on my timeline. The California Classic Double, the Jalapeno Double, and the Double Cheeseburger, two forty nine each. How yeah, they know the algorithm, dude? Charbroil Double Deals for two forty nine each. Only at Carl's Jr. Available for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Price higher in the last couple of Tax not included. All right, I'm back. This is Sergeant Dave with the Remember the Fallen Show at the beautiful Never Forgotten Memorial YouTube Studio. In beautiful Seminole County, USA, on the Winter Springs Oviedo line. So we're getting back with the Seminole Stand Down for our Veterans Homeless 2019, 10th year anniversary. And I just was so humbled just to go in there and just help these homeless veterans. So I helped two two sets of veterans. And the first veterans, I, I got a chance to, to get them some serious uh, gear, some uh, backpack, uh, duffel bag, that wrapped around his shoulder, he loved it. He came in with a lot of his own personal gear. Obviously, he took the bus, and that's everything he owned, so it's really sacred to him. So we got him a beautiful duffel bag. He really enjoyed that. It's one of the first things. And I got him a cane. So he was limping, so I got him a cane, and we were able to help him with so many uh, uh, so many uh, stations. There was over around 30 stations of benefactors there, so it was just wonderful to just experience him. We're looking and smile, and everybody's just so nice to everyone. And then with veterans helping veterans, it's just amazing when you see that type of thing. So here he is. He's gonna. I got him on an interview. So I did interview him. So I hope you'll be able to hear it the best as possible. All right, here it is. Here's Mike from the Seminole County Stand Down 2019. Occasionally, right? Occasionally. Don't, don't we all a little bit, right? 
So what makes this year different than the last stand down you, you went to? Uh, what makes this different, this specific stand down? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm trying to make as many as I can, but it's a beautiful day today, and the people are very friendly, you know, the yeah. volunteers like you. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, being out, being, uh, being in this environment, yes. you know, it's very positive. Yeah, great. And once again, um, you're on the street, so where, where, what happened with your bad luck? What, where, where was that time in your life where it just went downhill, and, and was it because you were, were fired from a job, or was it a, a marriage? What kind of, what kind of made you go down this, this, at this path? Well, it's, hard, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. You know, there are many different things that happened to me to, for me to end up like this. You know, it's not it's not, it's not simple. It's, it's a complicated yeah. process. It's not just one thing. No, several, and, and several. they all piled up on you, right? Yes. Okay, so do you have family out there, Mike? No. No, and that could be one. And you're missing that support, that well, support chain. And right now, do you have friends on the street? How is that? I mean, I'm a loner. You're a loner. Okay. You can't trust nobody on okay, the street. Okay, so you're a lone wolf. You're basically <laughs> yeah. the lone wolf out there. Okay? I like your shirt, man. Freedom. And it, it says read. So if you read, it gives you freedom, right? Because you, you learn things. You know how to go through the system. You know, you do the right things and stuff like that. So uh, you got some clothes. You got to get some good food here in a minute. And you've got, um, um, you didn't take any uh, health health uh, things, because you, you told me earlier, uh, if it's not broke, what did you say earlier? Don't fix it. Don't fix it if it's <laughs> not broke, right? So, um, we'd like to get, get a flu shot, and you said, nah, I'm not going to get a flu shot. And uh, okay. I, I'm old school. Man. Okay. How about give some blood, huh? Yeah, give I, some I, blood? I don't like needles. <laughs> I doesn't like needles either. I can't get that. <laughs> well, Mike, I, I just want to thank you for your service and, and uh, hope things get better on track. We're going to try to work with the uh, home, your homeless situation. Try to, uh, you just got to pick up the phone. You got to talk to these guys. In fact, the guy, Colonel, inside, Al, he gave me your number. Please, you got to call them. Now, do you have a cell phone? No, I don't. You don't have a cell phone. So, how would you? Make a phone call. How would you do that? I guess I had to use a, t- uh, the, what do you call it, a telephone booth. They have those still? Yeah, they yeah, got they them. Got them. All right, so got you, them. you got chains, right? Like, I'll get some chains. You got some chains. So we got to get you a cell phone. What's really surprising? How about an email? Do you have an email? No. You don't want to know email either, huh? I don't have an email. You don't have an email. You ever go to the library, right? You know, I, I tried to do that yesterday. They had a class to start emails. But you have to have a phone in order to do an email. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, no. oh, man. So if you go to the library, I think you can uh, avoid that. I think you can just sign up right at the library. Just think of your, your name, Michael Herring, right? Your last four at gmail.com. That's all you need to do is just think of something simple, a number, because it might be another Michael Herring, a kind of a popular name, you know? So, uh, yeah, I just suggest that. But anyways, thank you for your service, Mike. Thanks for coming out for the stand down. We appreciate it. Just toughen it up out there and hope to see that things get better for you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, it's getting zero dark 30 for the show, and I'm just about ready to go into rack ops mode and relax. Never. But before I do that, one last promo. Go to Sergeant Dave Matthews at gmail.com. That's S G T D A V E M A T T H E W S at gmail.com for any suggestions for the next show. Or you maybe you know of a veteran that would be a great hoorah for the show. You can email me that. And if you could do as well, go ahead and like my page on Facebook. It is Remember the Fallen, all one word. Go ahead and like that, Remember the Fallen. And you can tweet me at Sergeant Dave at Heroic Memorials. Or if you're not into the Twitter bird thing, you can go to my website at www. Neverforgottenmemorials.org, and you can volunteer for your time, or you can even donate. And mark your phone calendar for every Thursday night at 9 o'clock at klrnradio.com. Select shows and tap whatever show is running, and that probably would be Remember the Fallen Show right after 9 o'clock, or you can always go to Archive and see my shows that are archived, been doing for over a year. All right, so until all the troops come home, God bless America.